All right, welcome back, folks. Now we're going to do what I believe to be the hardest recursion problem ever in the beauty and joy of computing, ever. We would never ask you on a blank piece of paper to do something harder than this or even of equal difficulty. This guy is just brain-busting hard, and so I'm going to go slowly. It might be a long video, but stay with me because this is worth it. Count change. We're doing count change. Count change says, if I give you the set of coins, a 50 cent piece, this is the US coins, a quarter, 25 cent piece, a dime, a 10 cent piece, a nickel, a 5 cent piece, and a penny. How many ways are there of making change of a certain amount? So, how many, are, wait, how many ways are there of making change for 5 cents? Two ways, a nickel or five pennies. Not too hard. Okay, this, it, gets, it starts easy, it gets harder very quickly. How many ways of ch making change for a dime? Well, four ways. A dime, two nickels, a nickel and five pennies, and ten pennies. Now, don't think that a nickel and five pennies is one way and five pennies and a nickel is another way. That's the same way, okay? Four ways. So that's not so bad. How about 15 cents? Okay. Dime and a nickel, one way. Dime and five pennies, way number two. Three nickels, way number three. Two nickels and five pennies, way number four. One nickel and ten pennies, way number five. Fifteen pennies. That's six. Now I ask you, how many ways are there making change for a dollar? Whoa! <laughs> right? How would you even think of this kind of a question? This is really hard. So we're going to start by giving you the answer. I'm just going to hand you this complicated, beautiful recursion example of how you can take a hard problem, and if you think about it in a nice way, it isn't too bad. We're going to go through it. And what I normally do is start in my base cases. This is so hard, we're not going to do that. We're going to start in the recursive case and then prove to you that the base cases are there to act as the backstops when the thing gets smaller. For example, in factorial, I could, start, I could have started on the recursive case where n gets smaller by 1 each time. And I'd ask you, what's your base case? Well, if you're going smaller by 1, you've got to stop when you get to like 0 or 1. Okay? If you're getting smaller by 1 and 2, you got to have the base case to be able to handle so it doesn't jump over the base case to handle it, right? Like, so the base case better be less than something so it doesn't kind of like happen to miss it because of odd even parity or something like that. So now, I'm going to give you two cases. If I'm walking toward a wall, the base case is, am I facing the wall? Is my nose touching the wall? Stop walking. You kind of get it? If, I'm, if my algorithm is walk toward the wall every step, the base case would be stop when your nose touches the wall. Okay? So you kind of bring the base case up as needed, really. So let's think about this. All right. Take a deep breath. The way to think about this problem is to think about it into two camps. I have a list of coins, 50 through 1 penny, OK? And I look at that list. I look at the first number coin on the, the biggest coin on that list, the 50 cent piece. And I ask you, am I going to use that coin or not use that coin? Think about that. I've got an A and B, right? It's either yes or no. Do I use that coin in my solution right now, or do I not use that coin? Okay? And here's the coolest part. You, if you agree that that splits the world into two things, I either use it or don't, now I split it into two different cases. Okay? And if you look at the answer, the answer has two different cases here. Let's think quietly about this. If I don't use the coin right now, that means you can never use the coin. So I'm going to recurse and make the problem simpler. If I don't use the coin now or ever in the future, then what does that mean? That means I take my list of coins, I take the first one off of it, and I recurse. It's the same number I'm trying to solve. I'm trying to do maybe a, do a dollar, right? That's 100. I'm trying to solve. I get handed 100 and a list of coins. Now, well, the cool thing is, watch, each of these can get smaller. The 100 can get smaller as I solve smaller and smaller problems. And the list of coins can get smaller. So I ask myself, am I using the coin or not? If I don't use the coin, then I get smaller by taking the coin off the list. And now the problem is smaller because I still have the 100, but now the list of coins is smaller by 1. What's my base case then? My base case in this case, now that I'm making my list smaller, is when my list is empty. 
Does that make sense? If I make them a little smaller, you've got to stop when this thing ends. I can't, can't, can't make it negative. Okay? So there's a base case here that says, is the list of coins empty? If I do use the coin, then here's what I do. I use the coin. Guess what I do? I subtract the amount I'm looking for, 100, by the coin. And now I recurse on that same list of coins, but the amount I'm asking is smaller by the amount of that coin. And guess what? I can still use the coin in the future, because I said it's OK to use in the future if I use it. So if I use it once, I can still use it. But if I say no to using that coin, I can never use it, which means I take it out of the list, and it's not even, it's not even there. That's it. That's my code. I got to stop when the list of coins is empty, because that's on this side I'm recursing down where the list gets smaller, or I stop when this number I'm asking for gets small. And what's the bottom, what's the base case, what's the backstop for the number getting small? Zero or negative. If it's zero, I got it perfect. Let's say I ask for, can I, let's look at the simplest case, right? 25 cents, and the coins are 25, 10, 5, and 1. Okay, so 25 cents. If I use the coin, 25, okay, I got it exactly, right? 25 cents, I used a quarter, I got exactly that. What's 25 minus 25? Zero. So it worked, right? When I get to zero, it worked. Does that kind of make sense? So I count it. Yay, report one. Because I'm counting chain. I'm counting the number of ways of doing it. If I ever get to zero, it means I worked. It means all the coins being subtracted so far worked out so that my total remaining is exactly zero. Woohoo! One. I return one. If it's ever negative, it means I went too far. If I ask for 24 cents, so let's do 24 cents. And I had a list of coins of 25. OK? Let's, okay, let's try it. There's a side where I use it and don't use it. If I use it, let's, this, this side is the use it side. I use it, 24 minus 25, negative 1, right? So that didn't work. I can't put a quarter in the 24 guy, right? I can't make change for 24 cents with a quarter. So that means I'll get to negative 1, which means I didn't get it. It didn't work. So I return 0 in that case. And look at this. If the amount's negative, or if I happen to run out of coins, then I, didn't, I, I, tried to, I kept trying to get coins. I still had a number yet, but ah, oh, it didn't work. I returned 0. If I ever have exactly 0, it worked, and I return 1. Otherwise, I have a generic problem with a list of coins that's not empty and a number that's bigger than 0, and I do what? I divide it into two cases. I either use the coin, use the coin, or I don't ever use the coin again. And that's it. So that was the call. So here's one case, count change amount using all but first of. That's where, that's the side I don't use the coin. What's the next recursive case? Count change of amount minus the first coin. And, and the coin stays the same. So the list of coins stay the same, but I reduce, I reduce the number I'm asking for by exactly that first coin amount. But I could still use the coin in the future. So if the solution is like 30 cents and the solution, I want to be able to see a solution dime, dime, dime. So I want to be able to have the case where I can reuse the case both times. 